Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on RealLibertyMedia.com and RLMRadio.xyz. Ah, uh, yeah, folks, it is that time. Once again, Grim Leftovers back on your Monday evenings, and it is now G- January 6th. 2020. Yeah, it's a whole brand new freaking year here, and I am ready for episode uh, 53, week number one here in 2020. Yep, I got a bunch of stories lined up for you and uh, all kinds of fun stuff. So uh, welcome to the show right here on uh, RLM Radio, RealLibertyMedia.com, and all of the other places the audio stream goes out to. Uh, That would be FreedomsNetwork.com. RealLiberty.org, Shoutcast.com, InternetRadioTuneIn.com, oh, who knows all where, but it's out there in various places, and after the show, it goes to more places, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we go to Spreaker, we go to YouTube, we go to BitChute, yep, all kinds of, all kinds of fun stuff going on there on uh, that afterwards, so anyway, how y'all doing? Last time I saw you was in uh, mid-December, and then I... Took some time off, took two weeks off uh, for the Grim Leftover show, but I'm back now, and it's a, it's a new year, and hopefully you all had a great uh, holiday s- season, I guess, is the way to put that. <laughs> Your uh, solstices and Christmases and uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and all that stuff. Uh, you know, we're almost a week into to the 2020 now, so it's kind of like old hat saying that, but uh, it's my first time to, to, to talk to you all about it, so... Anyway, hopefully you're all doing well and had a, had a good time there on that. Um, yeah, I had I had an all right time, all right, all right season there uh, throughout the Christmas. Uh, you know, whatever, nothing too fancy, but uh, you know, exchanged some gifts with the family there and uh, whatever. Caught up on some movies and stuff I wanted to watch, things like that. Everything's going smoothly. Uh, then last night, I'm coming home from getting groceries there, and uh, I press my little automatic garage door opener button there, and the door goes up about two-thirds of the way, and it stops. <laughs> and I press it again, and nothing happens, nothing happens. And so I get out of the Jeep there, walk into the into the garage, I'm ducking underneath the thing, and uh, it just ain't moving, so I, I shoved it up far enough to pull the Jeep in there, and then I uh, was able to pull the, the door down, and um, I noticed that there was, uh, well, the motor was still spinning, or still trying to do something, but ain't nothing going on. <laughs> so I just, uh, since I, since you can't really lock the garage door without the garage door opener, I, uh, I jammed some screwdrivers down into the the pulleys on either side there, and uh, that that holds it in place so nobody can open it. Uh, so anyway, I, I researched it today, and I find the uh, the main drive gear is shredded. It's a big white nylon gear that pulls the chain back and forth. So anyway, I got to order one of those, put that in. <laughs> I got the Jeep parked underneath it, so I just climb up on top of the Jeep, and I can I can work on the garage door opener. <laughs> Anyway, so that's kind of fun. <laughs> Not really, but, you know, it is. It has stuff that, hey, part of being a homeowner, right? Uh, anyway, <laughs> enough about all that. Let me say hi and howdy to all the folks over here in the chat room today, this evening. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get out. No, it's not the sensors, most girl. It's, it's this big white gear. Uh, so, uh, yeah, not the sensors. <laughs> not a big deal. It's, it'll be a little project, but uh, I, I, and the parts are cheap, too. I, I found the parts on Amazon, and uh, I can get just the gear for, like, five, six bucks, or the whole kit for uh, $20, and there's a middle middle thing there. So, no, no, nothing stuck in the track. It's just an old, old gear. So, anyway, uh, I'm not, not talking about that anymore. I'm done with that <laughs> for now. <laughs> Maybe Friday night. All right. So we got here in the chat, we got the barman, the bot, my wonderful bot, uh, Mr. Beetle, the spaghetti-eating beetle, Cowboy Tech. How you doing, CT? 
uh, myself and the Mighty Moose Girl are here. The lovely, wonderful Miss Kate. Hey, Kate, how are you? Uh, Prince up there in brackets for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, by the way, Prince, for those of you that missed it last week, uh, Prince Thursday evening show that he was doing with Poopster, the Power Hour, he now does with Zipix and <laughs> somebody else whose name escapes me at the moment. But if you go to the, the show page, the uh, Power Hour show page there on, on Real Liberty Media, you'll you'll see who he's doing it with him and, and, and this other guy that I should know the name of. Anyway, we got Anti and Azimo and Chelsea. Don't we miss Graham Z? Hey, Grammy! How are you? Uh, Java Doctor, the Judge Dread Hansel. Uh, Meester Meister Brow. Poopster himself. Hey, Poopsta! Um... Uh, yeah, Rob works. Hey, Rob, passing that bubbler around. Good man, good man. Always passing the bubbler. He's, you gotta, you gotta, you know, a friend with weed is a friend indeed. Uh, we got Mr. Robes. Uh, Vanna White Bot, the Vin E, not quite a bot. The Weather Dork Bot, uh, Phantom CC66, Choskira, Circle, 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 Circle. Yeah, I will do a um, a surf music show, but not uh, probably not during a Sunday blues show. Uh, I'll do it one day during the week while you are around. I won't do it while you're sleeping, because I'm doing it just for you. <laughs> we got the cyborg noodles, Miss Damn Van Meter, and I say I look at Dan, I say Damn Van Meter. Uh, we got Duh Duh E Man and N Siv the Flasher. Oh, yeah, Flash will be on tomorrow with his program called In a Perfect World. And maybe with Grammy, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. Uh, who's who's going to help him out there on that? If anybody, he kind of likes doing solo shows anyway. So we got the Frumpster. We got Gromit JJ's. As things in Scotland today. The Spoon Sauce Pup Bot Bot. Sock puppet, uh, Slim, Jim Flim, who chatted up with us today. You know, Slim Jim, no need, no need to be so angry. No need. The smart ass bot, the holiest of Rogers, and uh, the aforementioned Zipix. What a crowd, what a crowd. Always great folks here in the chat room on RLM Radio. Come, come on over, reallibertymedia.com. Jump into the chat. If you have an IRC client, just connect up to Freenode irc.freenode.net and jump on in pound pound real liberty media and you can be here with all these excellent folks and chat about whatever whatever you decide to chat about yeah 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 um all right so i'm a little discombobulated i, I i'm using a different browser now so i had to move all my my read it later style links uh, from from the Firefox over to the Brave. And so they're not really in order. Uh, so as far as saying, oh, this one's the newer, and that, that'll that work itself out as time goes on. Uh, but <laughs> to start off with, um, I, okay, uh, there was some new stuff I wanted to talk about anyway. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And, and then we'll get to some of the other stories uh, that are from more of the leftover era. <laughs> I should say, but but the leftovers will not exactly be uh, following pattern that that that, that I typically follow, uh, just because you know, just because. Anyway, one of the big stories over recent days, recent weeks here, ha has been the massive brush fires going on down there in the country of Australia, and you know it, it is their summertime down there right now. Uh, so if you're thinking about having brush fires somewhere, don't think that they're having brush fires in the middle of winter. Not that that couldn't happen, because it happens in California. Well, not really the middle of winter, but uh, just leading up to winter, uh, more, more often than not. Anyway, so it, it's hot, and it's hot in Australia anyway. And uh, people are thinking, or blaming, they're on the Greta bandwagon, the Greta Thunberg bandwagon and saying, oh, look at this is climate change. Climate change be killing us. Yeah, not really. Not so much. Now, um, I, I, I posted uh, this article over on um, 
RealLiberty.org earlier today. And uh, the, the title of the article, let me, let me give you that before I go on here. The title of the article is, Nearly 200 People Arrested Across Australia for Deliberately Starting Brush Fires. So I posted this article on RealLiberty.org, and over there on RealLiberty.org, well, there's a there's a nice gal over there uh, that goes by the name of Mary B, and she lives down there in Australia, uh, and and she um, chimes chimes in on the article here that uh, the article fails to mention also the dry storms with lightning strikes and thunder, no rain. Some of the fires down south are creating their own weather systems as well. I don't believe that the majority of fires, as the article suggests, are started by people. But then she adds, she knows a couple of people that have been arrested. She personally knows a couple of people that have been arrested for starting fires down there. She's not sure about 200, you know, um, but but she, she does personally, uh, she's one person and she knows... Well, why are people starting brush fires? Why are you burning up your own country? <laughs> what the hell? Okay, back to the article. <laughs> anyway, this is posted on a website called ussanews.com. It says, Authorita in Australia have arrested close to 200 people for deliberately starting the brush fires that have devastated the country. Yet the media celebrities and celebrities continue to blame climate change for the disaster. The fires have caused at least 18 deaths, destroyed thousands of homes, millions of hectares of land, and killed hundreds of millions of animals. There was a big story about uh, Steve Irwin's family, I do believe it was, uh, saving like 90,000 animals or something. Pretty cool. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, if you're talking about millions of animals being killed, not that big, but still saving 90,000 animals, is, is, is uh, that, that's quite the effort, by, you know, for one family there. Anyway, a total of 183 people have been arrested by police in Queensland, uh, NSW Victoria, South Australia, and Tasmania for lighting brush fires over the last few months. Figures obtained by the news agency AAP show. Uh, the New South Wales, in New South Wales, 24 people were arrested for arson, risking prison sentences of up to 25 years. In Queensland, police concluded that 103 of the fires had been deliberately lit with 98 people, 67 of them juveniles, having been identified as the culprits. The link between arsonists and the deadly fires that devastate Australia every single summer is well known and well documented, with the rate of uh, deliberately lit fires escalating rapidly during the school holiday period. Around 85% of the brush fires are caused by humans, either deliberately or accidentally starting them, according to Dr. Paul Reed, co-director of the National Center for Research in Brush Fire and Arson. About 85% are related to human activity, 13% confirmed arson, and 37% suspected arson. The remainder, usually due to reckless fire lighting, even children just playing with fire, uh, Reed also highlighted the link between school holidays and kids starting fires, commenting school holidays are a prime time for firebugs, but especially over the summer. The kids have got time to get out there and light, and the most dangerous adults choose hot days. So uh, there's, there's, there's more to the article, but, I mean, come on, people. Uh, what, 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 what the hell? Uh, last week, Bernie Sanders uh, <laughs> blamed those who were delaying action on climate change for the blood-red sky and unbreathable air in Australia because of the raging forest fires. Bernie, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you freaking liar. I'm not going to call you a moron because I, I know you're not that stupid, but you are lying in order to uh, try and gain momentum in this fake political drive. So I, I just, you know, all you people, you, 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 you freaking, um, oh, God. Anyway, there it is. USSA News, according to the tagline, the Tea Party's front page, which I was unaware they had their own front page, but apparently they do. And there it is. <laughs> okay. Now on to this Iran stuff. This Iran stuff. Oh, boy, it gets deep. You know, as I go through before the program, doing my show prep for, for this program, uh, I, I got to line up all of the different articles that I plan on talking about during the show. And, and as I put them in there, one after another, boom, 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 and then I add them in, I put the tags in, all that stuff, and, and, and I'm reading these headlines as, I, as I'm putting them in there, and it's like, holy hell, this is the world we live in? This, this, is, this, this is really the place, the planet that we live on, that we have to, this is the people that live here with us doing these things? It's insane. The world's insane. It's a crazy place for lunatics. <laughs> And, and if you're not one of them, you know, if you're not one of the lunatics uh, right now, uh, just dealing with this kind of stuff day in and day out for, well, 59 plus years as I have, uh, you feel like you're crazy, even if you're not, because you, you got to, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, this article posted on the Daily Mail uh, here, Donald Trump tweets that he'll strike back in a disproportionate manner if Iran hits the United States targets after Tehran put an $80 million bounty on his head, threatened the White House, and tore up the nuclear deal. Well, did not Trump already tear up the nuclear deal? Did not Trump already back out of the nuclear deal? So what's he care if they do? He already backed out of it. He already said, screw it, I'm not doing a nuclear deal with you. And he'll strike back in a disproportionate manner if they strike back for him murdering one of their main guys, one of their main power guys down there in Iran. So he's just fine, go ahead and, 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 and kill whoever from another country, but if they lift one finger uh, in protest uh, or retaliation against that, he will strike back in a disproportionate manner. Well, let me say this about that, about what's going to happen and what's not. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, um, all of the reaction... Uh, either further from the U.S. or at all from Iran, hinges upon one thing. What does Russia have to say about it? Because I guarantee you, if Russia puts a kibosh on this whole matter, and they may well, they're not happy about this, they don't like this at all. But it comes down to that. The United States has probably very little issue dealing directly, uh, blowing the hell out of Iran. But they do not want to incur the wrath of Russia. They are not, and if Russia says, don't you do this, this will be pretty much the end of it. Um, uh, now, Iran's got to do something, whatever it may be. And uh, Russia will give them just enough uh, leash to, 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 to show that, yeah, we mean it. And, and what Iran is looking at doing right now, uh, the way they're leaning is to just get the United States out of the Middle East, out of Iraq and Iran anyway. Um, Iraq has already passed a, a parliamentary decision to tell the U.S. to get out. Now, the U.S. has come back and said, you've got to give us $80 million for that airport we built. Well, they, you know, they, 
The U.S. did that on their own. There was no contract signed saying build us an airport. Um, and, and if you want to blow up the airport before you leave, hey, <laughs> um, that's going to look pretty pretty nasty on your part. But, you know, I wouldn't put it past you. So, um, <laughs> anyway, so this that's what it really comes down to. And you're going to read headlines about all kinds of different things going on over there between this and that. Uh, and it's temporarily good for certain commodities, uh, oil being number one, of course. Uh, and, and, and they, you know, Iran and Iraq could both say, hey, we're going to cut off the oil, uh, which is, would be a big thing. But, you know, that kind of stabs themselves in the back, and they don't really want that because uh, they need that, that income. Um, now, not that the United States officially allows Iran to sell oil anymore anyway because, <laughs> because of all the sanctions they put on them. Uh, but uh, Iran still sells oil. <laughs> Believe you me. <laughs> All right, so let me give you some of the bullet points here from this article here. Uh, Trump warned on Sunday that the United States would strike back harder against Iran if it retaliated. So just lay there and take it. Lay there and take it. Sound familiar? United States cops, how, how they act? Yeah, we're going to beat you down if you raise your hand to protect your face from our baton. Well, we're going to consider that you, you striking us, and we're going to get you even harder. Uh, Iran officials and supporters of uh, General Qasim Soleimani vowed vengeance for his death in the U.S. strike on Friday. Uh, Trump tweeted, should Iran strike any U.S. person or target, the United States will quickly and fully strike back and perhaps, almost definitely, in a disproportionate manner. At a funeral procession for Soleimani, uh, Iranians were urged to donate $1 each to raise the bounty. Uh, Iranian MP, some guy's name I can't pronounce, threatened to attack the White House during open session of Parliament on Sunday. Uh, MP's threats came after Trump warned that the United States would hit 52 targets representing victims of Iran hostage crisis. Now, if you don't recall the Iran hostage crisis back in 1979. <laughs> back in 19... He's going back to 1979. Don't ask me why. It worked out just just fine for all those hostages. They got them out. Well, you know, uh, Reagan or uh, Ross Perot uh, got them out, got them out of there. Um, so... <laughs> So why is Trump going back to this Iranian hostage crisis? I, I, I really, <laughs> what's going on in your head, boy? Anyway, Iran has also announced that the country will no longer abide by any limits of the 2015 nuclear deal. And I say more power to you. Of course, the Iran Iran is still um, allowing the IAEA inspectors in. And they are still following the uh, international nuclear deals, just not the one that the United States struck with them under Obama there. Which, of course, I said, as I said earlier, Trump already pulled out of. Um, Iran also threatened to hit 35 American targets in the region, including U.S. ships, following the top general's death. His body was returned to Iran Sunday to chance of death to America ahead of a three-day funeral. Iranians raised the blood-red flags of revenge over the minarets at the uh, revered Jamakaran Mosque. Thousands of paratroopers from the 82nd Airborne Division continue to deploy to the Middle East. Uh, yeah, eighty million dollar GoFundMe. <laughs> now I don't know what percentage GoFundMe gets out of that, but uh, uh, I'm sure they would love that. Anyway, so I, I, I you know, that those are just the bullet points at the top of this article. The article is long, and uh, I'm not going to go through it because uh, I really don't think it makes a difference one way or the other. Uh, right, exactly. Rob Works points out if we can go back to '79, Iran can go back to 1953. Uh, when, the, when the CIA pushed out the uh, the Ayatollah or whatever the guy's that what uh, title was um, back then, so I mean, come on. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't worry too much about 
really anything happening as far as uh, nuclear war, World War Three, the end of the world as we know it, any of that kind of stuff, because seriously, Russia is not going to allow it. And, I, I, and, and the United States does not want uh, to get into any kind of uh, war with Russia. They just don't. Now, the, Russia is going to allow Iran to do something. Whatever that is, uh, it'll be something seemingly minor. I don't know what it'll be, but but it'll be something. I mean, they have to. They got, they got a million people out on the streets protesting, and, and they're looking uh, for whatever that that eighty million dollar fund there. Um, so uh, yeah, something's got to happen, uh, but it's not going to be what everybody's thinking and looking at. I, I'm pretty sure of that. Um, yeah, the Shah, right, exactly. Thank you, Moose Girl. The Shah of Iran back in 53. Um, so, uh, okay. Now this one, <laughs> I, this has actually been out a couple of days, but I just came across it today. And uh, color me shocked. Oh, wait a second. Not shocked at all. <laughs> I mean, this has such shades of Giuliani. Nine one one, nine one one. Mike Pence, your VP there for you uh, U.S. people. <laughs> Mike Pence falsely links Iranian general to nine eleven attacks. Yeah, you heard me right. On Friday afternoon, Vice President Mike Pence took to Twitter to justify the targeted U.S. attack that killed Iranian General Qasim Soleimani. But scholars and anybody with a half a brain and able to look something up said his tweets contained several inaccuracies, including an allegation that appeared to link Soleimani to the September 11, 2001 attacks. In the tweet, Pence wrote that Soleimani assisted in the clandestine travel to Afghanistan of 10 of the 12 terrorists who carried out the September 11 attacks in the U.S. So the Israelis were flying to Afghanistan? Well, maybe that's not what he meant. Uh, as head of the Islamic Republic of Iran's elite coup force, Suleimani 62 was indeed responsible for a lot of really bad stuff. But to link Suleimani, one of Iran's highest ranking officials, with direct involvement in 9-11? That's flawed on many levels. Uh, according to Osama F. Khalil, an associate professor of history, of, of history at Syracuse, the first inaccuracy is the number of hijackers involved in the 9-11 attacks, which killed nearly 3,000 people in New York, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. No, 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 mention, no mention of the Pentagon there. All right, uh, the correct number is 19, not 12. At least that's the correct official number. <laughs> my, my correct number is zero, but, you know, uh, I, I go a different path on these things. Anyway, a Pence spokesman, Katie Waldman, later wrote on Twitter that Pence had meant that 12 of the 19 uh, were transited all the, through Afghanistan and that 10 of those 12 were assisted by Soleimani. So he uh, misspoke. He misspoke. Yeah, he killed JFK, too. <laughs> That's right. And he shot Reagan. <laughs> right. And he killed John Lennon. Uh, anyway, um, Misaga Parsa, a sociology professor at Dartmouth College, said either way, there was scant evidence, uh, zero evidence to back up the claim. Where is the evidence? And who were these ten people? Uh, Iran is a Shiite Muslim theocracy. Nearly all of the 9-11 hijackers were from Saudi Arabia, a Sunni Muslim monarchy uh, that for decades has had tense relations with Iran. The hijackers were all part of al Qaeda and the Sunni extremist network led by Obama bin Laden. Ob Obama's bin Laden. Osama bin Laden. <laughs> Although the 9-11 Commission report states that there was strong evidence 
suggesting I read, yeah, in the 9-11 Commission report, you can hang your hat on that one, um, <laughs> states that there was strong evidence suggesting Iranian officials facilitated the transit of al-Qaeda members uh, in, into and out of Afghanistan before 9-11, and that some of them ended up as hijackers. The report did not state that Suleimani was involved, and furthermore, noted there was no evidence to suggest Iran or Hezbollah was aware of the planning for what later became the 9-11 attack. Yeah, they weren't sitting over there in, in Israel. They weren't in on it. They, they, they were not part of that whole deal. Anyway, indeed, Suleimani was not mentioned even once in the report, which was released in 2004. Khalil was one of several scholars on Friday who seemed aghast at the errors in Penn's statements, particularly the notion that Suleimani, an Iranian hardline Shiite, would want to help al-Qaeda, a radical Sunni group, whose members consider Shiites to be apostates. It makes little sense from both a religious and political perspective. And just logic, pure logic, just says, What you talking, Obama been bombing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just crazy nonsense, man. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you. But if you want to get to the uh, maybe core, the core, ah, of where this came from, why, at this particular time, when Suleimani uh, was, in, was in Iraq, as part of his transit to Saudi Arabia for a peace conference, he wasn't there to kill Americans. <laughs> but if you want to know where it comes from, why at this particular time did this occur, here we go. Business Insider, December 28, 2017. The United States and Israel reportedly signed a secret pact to take on Iran. Got the date? December 28, 2000, 2017. That's not the date the thing was signed. That's the date this article came out. Israel and the United States have secretly signed a far-reaching joint memorandum of understanding providing for full cooperation to deal with Iran's nuclear drive. Israeli TV network Channel 10 first reported the pact. The document was signed on December 12th of 2017 at the White House. Israel and the United States have secretly signed a far-reaching joint memorandum of understanding providing for full cooperation to deal with Iran's nuclear drive, its missile programs, and its other threatening activities, an Israeli TV report said. The document was signed at December 12th on the White House, on December 12th at the White House, culminating intensive talks between representatives of the major Israeli and American intelligence and defense hierarchies, headed by the U.S. and Israel National Security Advisors, H.R. McMaster and Meir Ben Shabbat, respectively, said on Thursday. Citing both American and Israeli officials, the report said that the document was signed to translate into steps on the ground the positions set out by U.S. President Donald Trump on his October 13th speech on Iran, in which he decertified the Iranian nuclear deal. Decertified the Iranian nuclear deal. And now they're saying, oh, Iran can't back out of that deal. Yes, there is no deal. You already backed out of it. <laughs> After what the TV report described as a secret meeting at the White House, the United States and Israel set a joint agreement on strategy and policy regarding Iran. Specifically, they agreed to set up joint teams to handle various aspects of the Iranian threat. Now, at this point in time, of course, we all know the big trouble that Trump's in uh, dealing uh, with, uh, with the impeachment issue. 
But also over there in Israel, Netty, Nutty, Nutty Yahoo, uh, <laughs> Netanyahu is also in big trouble. So you got these two big guys in big trouble, and you got this secret pact by them to deal with the threats of Iran, and the timing kind of falls right into place because you knew that the that Pelosi and her gang wasn't going to push anything through on impeachment until at least today, Monday, the 6th of January, when they returned from their long, long, misguided X-Mass vacation. But they, uh, but, uh, so on Friday, yeah, uh, only a mere few days before uh, this return, why not strike up, strike up the band? Yeah, and start something. Strike up the band. Yeah, and start something uh, that might uh, uh, get people off of that uh, that impeachment thing and uh, get the Israelis back onto the nutty Yahoo bandwagon. <laughs> anyway, there's more to the article, but but uh, I think you understand what we're dealing with here. Uh, <laughs> But if that, if that wasn't enough, and not that these guys, well, I, I can't say that they didn't push to have this going, but you know they were drooling and are still drooling uh, about that, <laughs> about this whole thing at this point in time because, woohoo, stocks are up. The Mind Unleashed posted on uh, Saturday. If you are wondering who benefits, who benefits? <laughs> Weapons maker stock surge as U.S. risks war with Iran. Yes, indeedy, baby. That money be rolling in. Stocks for weapons manufacturers began to rise as soon as Soleimani was killed. Imagine that. <laughs> Almost immediately after the U.S. assassinated Soleimani in a drone strike Thursday night, major American weapons manufacturers and defense contractors from Northrop Grumman to Lockheed Martin to Raytheon saw their stock surge as investors sensed to grow the grow uh, sensed the growing likelihood of another costly and deadly and useless, meaningless war in the Middle East. As the LA Times reported, even as the broader Standard and Poor's 500 index lost ground, uh, the S&P Aerospace and Defense Select industry climbed almost 2% on Friday. According to the Times, Northrop Grumman stock uh, jumped 5.4%. Um, <laughs> Aerovironment Incorporated advanced 6.9%. Uh, shares of Lockheed Martin, that makes the F-35, climbed 3.6%. Raytheon uh, went up 1.5%. The surge in defense stocks was readily highlighted on corporate television programs like Fox Business and in publications like Invest Investors Business Daily, which noted Northrop Grumman, NOC, and Lockheed Martin, LMT, were big winners in Friday's stock market, Trading along with Raytheon stock, uh, Citigroup analyst Jonathan Raviv wrote Friday that if Middle East conflict were to ratchet up, we think it could be tougher for Democratic Party electoral candidates to argue against a stronger defense budget in 2020. Stronger? Hell, they just did an unprecedented amount already this year. Anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah... Follow the money. Hey, baby. Now, like I said, I'm not saying that these, uh, that these, that these war makers, war toy makers had anything to do with what happened, but they, they are all in favor of it. That is for sure. So, uh, yeah. All right. Enough on the, that kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> Let's do some other crazy stuff. A little more fun crazy stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> what a world. What a world! <laughs> I'm 
telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's a wild world. All right. From the Denver Post, uh, back on the 24th of December, uh, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Mysterious drones flying nighttime patterns over northeast Colorado leave local law enforcement stumped. Now, of course, there's been a lot more stories about this since then, but uh, this is the one I initially saw and bookmarked uh, back back when that happened. Um, so, uh, yeah, so th this is uh, the, the one I'm going to report to you with. And uh, as far as I know, as far as they know, they have not pinpointed uh, what's going on yet. They don't know. They've just got these drones flying around. Uh, Phillips County Sheriff said uh, there are at least 17 of the aircraft that fly between 7 and 10 p.m. nightly. A band of large drones appears to be flying nighttime search patterns over northeast Colorado. And local authorities say they don't know who's doing it. They don't know who's behind these mysterious aircraft. The drones, estimated to have a six-foot wingspan, have been flying over Phillips and Yuma counties every night for about the last week. And now they're still doing it, as far as I know. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's still going on. Uh, the drones stay about 200 feet to 300 feet in the air and fly steadily in squares of 25 miles, kind of searching patterns, it looks like. There are 17, at least 17 drones. They emerge each night around 7 p.m. and disappear around 10 p.m. Uh, they've been doing the grid search, the grid pattern. They fly one square, then they fly another square. Uh, the, the sheriff's office cannot explain where the drones are coming from or who might be flying them. The estimated size and number of the drones makes it unlikely that they're being flown by hobbyists, under Sheriff William Myers said. The FAA told the sheriff's office that it had no information on the drones, and the United States Air Force said they aren't aircraft of theirs either. A spokesman of the DEA told the Denver Post Monday that the drones are not operated by their agency. A spokesman for the FAA said the agency likely has no information on them. Drone pilots are not required to file flight plans unless they're flying in controlled airspace like near an airport. Uh, officials with the Air Force and Department of Defense did not immediately return the post's request for comment on the mysterious aircraft Monday. U.S. Army Forces Command spokesman John Boyce said Monday, Yeah, I don't know nothing. I know nothing! Nothing! <laughs> it's not training. It's not military drones. They don't seem to be malicious. We don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, <laughs> on Friday, Myers said he watched eight of the large drones flying along Yuma County, Bo County border near the intersection of US-385 and County Road 54. At the same time, a single drone hovered about 25 miles away over the town of Paoli. It didn't move all night. It just hovered over the town. And eight more drones flew over Haxton about 10 miles down the road from Paoli. So, uh, yeah, there's more to the article. Uh, telling you more of the specifics that they do know, but uh, all they really know is they got something mysterious going on. Very mysterious going on in the skies over Colorado. <laughs> all right. Oh, God. Come on, I close. I say close. All right, this next article. Not really much of an article, but I I found it semi-humorous and interesting, although not really humorous. It's just whatever. It is what it is. From ZeroHedge.com, December 26, 2019. Self-driving pizza delivery now in California. Huh. California gives the green light to companies testing driverless delivery vehicles, including Pizza. Yeah, the state of California's Department of Motor Vehicles announced the new regulations last week, which allows companies with a permit to operate autonomous driver the delivery vehicles that weigh up to 10,000 pounds. This weight category includes the autonomous passenger cars, mid-sized pickup trucks, and cargo vans carrying goods such as pizza or groceries. 
Companies will need to certify vehicles are equipped with an autonomous vehicle data recorder as well as technology to respond to road, roadway situations. Vehicles must also be certified to industry standards for helping defend against and respond to cyber attacks, unauthorized intrusions, or false vehicle control commands. Uh, for companies testing driverless and delivery vehicles, uh, companies need to ensure that they are equipped with a communication link between the vehicle and the remote operator and the ability to display or transfer vehicle owner or operator information in the event of a collision. Uh, so <laughs> he's got a picture of a, of a vehicle here. It's not necessarily what it's going to look like, but uh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and the guy says, amusingly, every time I do a post like this, readers tell me that technology is at least a decade away. Hello? Hello? It's right there. It's there now. Pizza for all. Oh, look at that. 7900 on the Bitcoin. Bitcoin bumper? Yeah, baby. All right. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. Okay. Uh, it, funny, funny, funny to me. Funny to you? I don't know. Funny to me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, did I put the wrong one? I put the wrong one, and I already closed the link. Hang on a second here. Dang, nebbit. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> whoopsie daisy alright <laughs> thanks Rob yeah sometimes I mess up alright okay truepundit.com being nice do you like to be nice or I mean sometimes you're just a nice person it's not that you want to be nice or you like to be nice sometimes you're just a nice person apparently if you are a nice person you are a tool of white supremacy, according to a female racial activist. <laughs> or a group of them, anyway. <laughs> yeah, bye, <baby. laughs> A group promoting painfully honest conversation between white women in the BIWOC, the Black, Indigenous, and Women of Color, claimed on Thursday that white women's obsession with being nice is a tool of white supremacy. That's right. If you're nice, you are being a tool of white supremacists. <laughs> As reported by the Daily Wire on the May uh, Race to Dinner leaders Regina Jackson and Sarah Rayo, created the organization to offer white women an opportunity to smash their white fragility by hiring women of color uh, to attend a dinner with their guilt tripped for all the alleged suffering they have caused them by virtue of being white. Guilt tripped them all for being white. The mission of the group is to reveal the naked truth about racism in America and unleash your power as a white women to dismantle it. So if if you know somebody and they're nice to you, yeah, if they're nice to you, then uh, uh, they're, they're they're simply white supremacists. That's all. Uh, it comes right, it comes right on down to that. They're white supremacists. <laughs> if you if somebody says thank you or you're welcome or May I, or excuse me, <laughs> or, or they're just in general, we have good manners. That means they're a KKK member. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> oh, God. Let's say you have a company out there that does engineering of some sort, design, te uh, various uh, type of scientific operations. And so you have to go to the colleges and, and hire people. 
that have been through the college and maybe came out with a pretty decent GPA or uh, showed some other efforts throughout their college that, that showed that they were learning things and doing things. Because you know that those people, in order to get into those good colleges, they've, they've got to they've got to go in there with something. They can't go in there being a total dummy if it's a decent college. And and then going throughout the college, in order for them to pass through that college, they've got to take courses and be tested on those on the information that they've learned going through those courses. And so that way you know you're going to get a good person to come work for you, a decently intelligent person, somebody that knows the material that they need to know to work for your, for your place and, and benefit you. Too bad, so sad, no more shall it be. <laughs> yes, indeedy. Colleges, and this is posted on AnalyzingAmerica.org, Colleges are dropping testing and standards in order to create more diversity. You heard me. You heard me. <laughs> in order to create more diversity within their own student bodies, colleges and universities are tweaking admissions and curriculum requirements. The changes include lowering standards as implications show that students from certain backgrounds cannot achieve high or as high test scores as their peers. Yeah, not so much. That's not, that's, that's not really the case. Uh, criticism arose from many students and parents given that these new standards create unfair advantages to students who don't fit the diversity bill. The CEO of College Board has decided to use a system called Landscape. Landscape does not assign a diversity score, but has a similar goal, considering socioeconomic factors in standardized test scores like the SAT and ACT. The factors considered are housing, stability, uh, median family income, household structure, college attendance, educational levels, and crime. Harvard found itself in the middle of a major scandal this year after being accused of bias against Asian Americans via the university's Affirmative Action Admissions Program. A federal judge ultimately sided with Harvard and suggested that a mandatory bias training for the school's admission, uh, admission officers should be implemented to give every student a fair chance. Edward Blum, plaintiff of the a group of students for fair admission, says he will be taking this case to the first U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals as he believes Harvard does indeed have a history of discriminating against Asian Americans. Uh, this year, Stanford published a physics course to ensure retention of underrepresented physics majors uh, the course is a modified version of standard required course with additional class timing and learning assistance hired uh, to offer extra help with coursework. Dummies in, dummies out. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the old uh, GIGO, G-I-G-O uh, computer term, garbage in, garbage out. Yeah, well, now it's going to be ditto, D-I-D-O, dummies in, dummies out, because... <laughs> if you, you're, you're lowering the standards, you're eliminating the tests, you're allowing these freaking morons, they should not be, go fix cars or something, don't, you're not a physicist, if you can't, if you don't understand the material, something's wrong with you, you don't belong there, not everybody needs to go to college, it's, this is just messed up. It's wrong. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> this it will not turn out well. It will not turn out well. All right. <laughs> and lastly, but certainly not leastly, although it does come from prophecynewswatch.com, and I don't really see a date on this article, 
posted here, but uh, big news, big news about big stuff coming from the big sky out there in space. Space is big. What do they know? U.S. and Russia developing plan to deal with incoming asteroids. Yeah. When the Russians take decisive action, it's usually for a reason. And as you will see below, the Russians have suddenly decided that now is the time to create an organization that will be tasked with detecting, tracking, and potentially destroying incoming asteroids. Are they doing this now because they have finally decided that it's a good idea? Or has something gotten their attention? Of course... They're not likely to publicly admit that they have come to the conclusion that a gigantic space rock is heading directly towards us. Just like the United States government, the Russian government is very interested in maintaining social order. Uh, so they would probably delay telling the public about a potential asteroid impact until it was pretty much coming into our atmosphere. In life... What people do is far more important than what they say. And the new center for the Russians uh, that the Russians have just created will not just be watching giant space rocks. According to Futurism, the new organization will be in charge of making sure they don't collide with us. <laughs> I, don't, I, have no, I have no idea how they think they're going to do that. How? <laughs> These guys, there's no way they can steer a meteor, regardless of what you see coming out of Hollywood. They can't steer a meteor. They can't destroy a meteor coming, a big-ass rock. No, <laughs> they can't do it. Now, they may think they're out there. They may have the arrogance of a group of people that you see in some of these Hollywood flicks about destroying meteors as they come towards Earth, but that ain't going to happen. <laughs> some of these rocks are freaking huge. Uh, anyway, so th there's, a, there's a bunch of stuff in this article. Take it for what it's worth. Uh, I, <laughs> you know... Um, uh, they did. They have created these these uh, agencies, but uh, as far as for them seriously thinking they can actually destroy a huge ass meteor, a couple hundred, uh, couple couple hundred uh, meters across, I'm just going to go ahead and say no. They can't do it. They 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 cannot do it. Uh, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's see if I got anything else. So, okay, good. Um, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. It was nice having two weeks off there, but I'm glad to be back, and I'll be back again next Monday with another edition of Grim Leftovers, and uh, hopefully I'll be a little more organized uh, than I was today. But, yeah, like I said, you know, it's a new browser. Everything's kind of uh, lining itself up, so uh, th things, are, things are what they are. So, um Y'all have yourselves a great week. Uh, uh, keep on listening. Uh, keep on listening to RLM Radio throughout the week. Like I said, uh, Flash will be on tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Eastern, I do believe. Might be 3 p.m. Check the schedule there on RealLibertyMedia.com. It's got all the times for all the shows that come on throughout the week. So, yeah, it's a great idea. Just check that schedule from time to time. I try and keep it pretty well updated. So, uh, yeah, check it out. Um... That's all. Uh, I, my, I will be back on Friday night, with hopefully with Moose Girl, for the Freakers Ball. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you're there for that, too. Uh, that's it. That's it. Y'all have yourselves a great rest of your Monday night. Monday, whatever. Maybe it's Tuesday for you. I don't know where you are. What the hell? <laughs> all right. Peace.